everybody. I will start out by first apologizing for the last video being so long. There is so much that I can talk about and some of the things re require a lot of explanation, uh, lengthy explanations to, to try to hammer home the point. So I promise this time I'll try to uh, going forward, give you the Coles Notes version. What I wanted to touch on today, uh, it's all going to be kind of winging it. So if I bounce back and forth, I apologize. Uh, the reason for that is just before I was kind of setting up to do this, I kind of stumbled across an article uh, in doing a little bit of research uh, based on a question I was asked about vital, vital signs, uh, blood pressure, heart rate, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and what I stumbled across was, it's a book written by a lady in the U.S. and she's heavily involved in uh, curricular and consultation for paramedics. And... The title of the book is Paramedic, Paramedic Practice Today. Um, the lady, uh, she's very experienced in the medical field. Uh, I'm sure she's very smart. But what struck me about the book was um, what she included regarding dystonia. Uh, and while she didn't really... Uh, leave it closed she left it open in her interpretation but essentially what she was saying is that uh, dystonia was often an adverse side effect of certain antipsychotics um, <laughs> it's kind of a hard pill to swallow but reading further through it I mean, she had some good points um, she did mention, as it relates to the vitals, that uh, um, it's very, it's uncommon and it's usually the case that vitals are not affected. Um, I know personally, myself, uh, that is the case. But um, when, with some episodes, depending on how tough the episodes are, how tight they are, uh, it can, I, I have had instances where uh, my heart rate has been affected. Um, oxygen levels, I've had issues with oxygen levels as well, uh, just simply because the if the episode is, say, my chest, um, if it's in my chest, then it causes everything to clench up and I can't breathe, can't breathe in or out. So it can affect oxygen, oxygen levels sometimes. Uh, so she does... She, I think she's right there that it's, it's usually unaffected as far as the vitals go. Um, but in her, in her book, she, she continues to say uh, to paramedics and want to be paramedics that to, you know, if somebody shows signs of, uh, of dystonic movements, uh, having these abnormal muscle tones, as she calls them, uh, essentially, basically, once you administer a medication to a person, once they, once the movement stop, that you're basically just to tell them that essentially everything is okay uh, and that this is temporary and it's not going to last. You're going to be fine. Uh, I think most of you watching this video already know that that's not really the case. If you somebody who has any sort of uh, dystonic movements that are one-off, I don't think that's true dystonia. I think you're looking more at something, uh, something possibly neurological, uh, but I don't think it's true dystonia. But again, it's just my opinion. I'm not a doctor. So to answer the question that Mayors asked me, uh, no and yes, uh, 99% of the time, my vitals are not affected, but if the episode is is uh, tight enough and if it affects certain areas, then yes, uh, at least my oxygen levels are affected and my heart rate as well. Uh, 
I wouldn't be surprised if people have some issues with their blood pressure or with their, again, heart rate. Again, it's, I think every episode is going to be different. Uh, every person is going to be different, just the same as the disorder, the way it affects us. It's, we're all different. So that, in a nutshell, is my answer to that question. Um, something else uh, that I really, that I wanted to touch on was just the overall effect that this disorder can have, and not just dystonia, but any sort of hidden ailment or illness where people really don't see what you may be going through, don't understand what you're going through. It's tough. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. it. It's really tough. So for parents of children who have the disorder or uh, their husband or wife or a parent or a friend, um, you know, it, it, I'm sure it's appreciated when you ask how the person is who has a, the illness. I'm sure they appreciate your you asking and showing that you care. Uh, don't be surprised if the answer that you will most likely get is I'm fine, I'm doing good. Uh, and that may be the case, they may be doing fine, they may be doing good, but it's not, sometimes it's easier to just say that and just end the, end the conversation as far as that part goes. It's easier to do that than it is to really get into how you're feeling because describing what you're feeling, at least for me, it's hard. It's, there's, it, there's really no easy words to describe it. So I can expect people to understand it. It's not, I, I don't expect people to understand it. So um, it's appreciated for sure, but again, don't be surprised. Um, I do hope that you, those of you who do have dystonia or any sort of hidden illness, I hope that you are willing and are open to talking when you do need assistance. If you're having a rough day, don't don't just sit and, and let it affect you uh, throughout the day without trying to find something that helps you. It's There are days where you do get down, that's totally understandable. And it's totally to be expected. Um, it's not easy. But it's not always negative. You know, try to find the positives and try to work on those because I'm a firm believer that if you are thinking positive and if you remain upbeat and, you know, you try to live a full happy life that your health will follow that trail as well and while you may not find you know a, a solid cure or treatment for your illness at least you're going to feel better about it and how you deal with it and with how you kind of carry yourself and you know essentially the way I like to look at it is, I have dystonia, it does not have me. And that's how I always want to look at it. Not just for me, but for those people who do care. Those people who do ask me on a daily basis how I'm doing, uh, how things are. Um, so yeah, it's a, lot of, a large part of life is how you look at it. So if the... Uh, if the doctors want to think it's psychogenic, at least make it a positive psychogenic. Hope you're well. Have a great day.